Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium. Today we're looking at this, which is a nice idea for a spoon rest. I don't have a spoon rest mould, um, so I make my own using fibre paper and um, then slump this into it to make a nice spoon rest. And the nice thing about it is it also has a little hole in the handle so you can put a string on it and hang it up to have a space saver. So I'm going to show you how to make this today. So the first thing we need to do for this particular video is to work out the size of the spoon. So we're constrained by the size of our kiln shelf. So we've gone diagonally across the kiln shelf because I want to get as big a possible spoon rest as possible. Um, we've cut out the bottom one, which is teched. Now the top layer, I want to be this white. So it's, um, this is actually dense white. Uh, and I wanted it to be slightly bigger so that basically when the, it's um, fusing and we're going to do a, we're going to do a good bubble squeeze on this one um, just so that it will relax the glass will relax round so you imagine this is underneath it will relax round it and so you're not going to see so much of the texture underneath it should sort of be encased in a way in the white so we need to cut this um, this out now if you go you can do it on a torus i'm going to just cut out like this yeah, guys i should be waiting i'm gonna put my glasses on where are your glasses But if you don't feel um, confident in cutting, uh, cutting, you could always use a you know mosaic nippers and sort of you know nip around a bit if that's better um, for you. Uh, this is going to go on a full fuse, so you know you can have it a little bit rough around the edges. Um, and because these are a great you know um, piece of kit for the studio, this is what we cut our marini with. This is you know we we. Um, cut all our marini with this you know just literally all you have to do to cut marini is that's a marini cane and you cut them like that and this is you know when we're hand cutting we use it i know there's lots of other tools out there but i think you get a better cut on these than anything else um and you can basically loosen up this and turn the wheels when they get blunt um so I have got a grinder, so I'm going to go and grind now off the edges of this. Um, but if you haven't got a grinder, you could just go in like this and it would be all right. Just, you know, get it as close, good as you can. If you're brilliant at cutting, you can cut it and you don't have to do any grinding at all. So here it all is all ready and cut. Now, guys, I'm using dense white. You need to clean this glass before you put it in the kiln. I use um, this is actually clean, the cleaner I get from Glass Studio Supplies in the UK and you just water um, dilute it down like 20 to 1. And I use um, microfiber cloths. If someone can tell me a better solution, I hate them because they're not great for the environment. But um, I'd, you know, I really don't know what else to use. But let's have a quick chat about Devit because I like to sometimes give a bit more information. So Devit, devitrification, the longer word. It's basically when the glass looks a bit scuzzy. Now I'm just trying to find some, but because I have a sandblaster and I do a lot of sandblasting, it's kind of hard to see. Um, but on this piece, because it's sort of pattern bars you hopefully can see it there it just doesn't look very nice um it's sort of it's cloudy it could be look a little dull um you can even get fingerprint marks from the grease on your fingerprint marks can can make your glass um divitrify the only way to get rid of it that once it's there is either sandblast a layer off or put a new layer of glass on top so you can put glass powder on top but it's much easier just to clean your glass properly and you won't get it. But let's say you're grinding the edge of your glass. If you don't take it around down to a 400 grit grind, you'll likely get D-bit at the edge of it. Um, so you wanna give it a really good clean. So here it is I'm putting together. Now there is still Sharpie on the bottom layer guys, but we're short on time. And I know that that is underneath the layer of white and will burn off. Um, it's the white layer on top I'm more worried about. Like, oh, spoon isn't symmetrical we are aware of this we're not bothered um you'll also notice that i haven't li lined up the the bottom mark where it's coming apart in the top they're sort of butting they're like this so you know they're not you know the handle is different is at different places on each one because i want to make sure that they you know i don't have the join in the same place 
and we've got this overhang which will work really nicely so i'm going to check that the overhang is all the way around um you can sort of get a pair of tweezers and sort of just look uh, it might be a bit no oh, that's pretty good all the way yep yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good there, pretty good there, pretty good all the way around. Make sure that's really close together. And then I'm going to decorate it. So the first layer of decoration I want to do is for the full fuse. And I just want to put some nice stringers on um, and get a feeling. Now, um, for the tack fuse decorations, I don't want them down the bottom where the, um, where the spoon is going to go because it would be a pain having kind of you know an area where you you've got kind of your, your spoon rest is for the sauces to sit in and you don't want kind of detail in there that can the food can get stuck in so i'm going to make sure that that area is all full fused and i'm using our um floral stringers and using the curve that you can get and many of the floral stringers you'll get to sit really nicely in this um in this shape to sort of accentuate it. Now I'm going to put a kind of pretty floral string there. That will all sit down and um, nicely sit down into the glass when it's fusing. And the good thing about doing a second fusing is I know I can go back and kind of add details afterwards. So I'm just going to keep on just adding bits of stringers and it's excessively pleasing one. Once I've done that, I'm going to then add some of these bluebells. Um, I know they're going to full fuse, and so we're going to lose our shape, the shape a bit on them, but I really like the colour for them for this project. So I am going to put those on. Um, I'm going to decorate in the middle bit here as well, and I'll get this done. So here it is all ready to go in the kiln. Um, I've not overloaded it. I'm hoping all the stringers will sit flat on here when they go full fused and not go outside the area. I will be, as I said, adding more to it after it's full fused. So I don't want to add up too much now and leave no space for the details on the handle with flame work flowers, lamp work flowers, um, after it's full fused and we're going to tack fuse it and drill a hole. So it's ready to go in the kiln now and um, we'll see how it is after it comes out from the full fuse. So here this is out of the kiln. I think it's worked out really well. I love the little bit of twisty on the handle. Um, just gonna flip it over so you can see how the white glass is sort of wrapped around the tector underneath so that side on it looks completely white, which I really like. I am now gonna decorate the top half of the handle with some other um, stringers and flame work, um, lamp work uh, flowers that we make. Uh, which then it can go back in as a tack fuse. I'm also going to drill a hole in the top of the handle now so that there's a hole there which will round off nicely in the tack fuse. So now I've drilled the hole I'm going to decorate with these stringers. I'm going to have to kind of glue them on because they're quite hard to get to balance um, uh, and some of the kind of um, lamp work flowers. Um, I'm going to use some of the blue blue, blue and white ones I have here um, to put on here. So here is the end of the um, spoon handle uh, decorated. As I said before, I'm not putting any marini up here because otherwise if you put a spoon in it with sauce in it, it's going to kind of collect in the marini and that's going to be kind of harder to clean. But up here I do want a little bit of 3D effect. Um, so this will go in on a very light tack fuse and a very long anneal because it's lots of layers and we can see how it looks when it comes out. So here it is out of the kiln with the tack fuse done. Now I want to do a bit of a slump. I want the end of this to curve down so that the, it sits up like this and this to have a slump in it so it's for the, the, the head of the spoon to sit and collect the juices. So what I've done is I've taken two level layers of fibre paper and another sort of smaller bit on top and cut it to the sort of bigger than the shape of the spoon and then I've cut a void where I want it to slump into. So this will sit on here like this this end piece will slump down to make up the area the handle will so that the handle will sit up at an angle and the head of the bowl the head of the spoon will slump into a kind of bowl shape for the kind of juices of the uh, the spoon to sit in i hope this is making sense it does to me but you'll see it when it comes out so we're going to put it in for a slump and we'll have a look after so here it is out of the kiln um 
two things to note. I, the, the first program I did hardly slumped it at all. So then I took it hotter and I opened the kiln lots to see what was happening. And when I was happy with the result, then I pushed, pushed the kiln forward to go to cooling down for a kneel. The other issue I had is this is dense white. <laughs> dense white really doesn't like being fused long and slow for any period of time. When I took this out of the kiln the first time, the devitrification on it was so bad that it had become porous and it was like it had been sandblasted. It was just, I mean, unbelievably bad devitrification on it. So then I had to take it out, sandblast it all over and put it back in again. I'm not thrilled with the end result. One, somehow I ended up leaving some um, silicon dust here and I got a kind of, um, you know, a bit of sort of, uh, you know, contamination here in the glass. And two, it's still not looking like the kind of lovely finished glass I, I would expect. So I would say don't use dense white. If you want white, use 13. Um, uh, and then, you know, just clean your glass really well before you put it in. Don't do what I do. Clean your glass. But all in all, it's a great, great um, uh, project to do. I love the shape. I love the fact that it's quite big and it fits the spoon on it really nicely. Um, I think this is going to go to a no nice home. I've got a friend of my um, daughter's who's helped me out loads and I think I'm going to give it to her as a present. So um, if you're, you know, I wanted to almost get this video out for you guys in the UK before Mother's Day, but unfortunately I didn't manage to. But for you guys in the States, this is a great Mother's Day gift. So if you fancy making something for your mothers out there or your mothers-in-law, this could be the perfect one. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this YouTube video and if you have, please subscribe.